This week on The Syndicate, Clint joins Cryptex Josh Cleghorn in Argentina for a one-of-a-kind hunt with Diego Gonzalez. Santiago, Chile, to fly over the hill to Mendoza, and we we're delayed almost a day now. First it was four hours, then it was six hours, now it looks like maybe tomorrow night, I don't know. Here, check this out. Do you have a voucher to go to the Bass Pro Shops and spend a couple hundred thousand? No, but I got our tickets in Santiago for a day and a half from now. Sweet. We had a handful of travel issues coming down. I got to spend uh, about 48 hours of travel with these guys and never meeting Josh. Didn't know what to expect, but salt of the earth, one of the best people I ever met. Uh, funny, hilarious, no filter, perfect. When you, when you travel international with weapons, it's always, um, it's always a problem, especially going to certain countries. Um, you either need to do your homework and do all the paperwork or you need to have a wad full of hundreds to get through customs. Um, fortunately for us, Argentina is pretty easy. Um, it takes some time to do all the paperwork, but after three hours, the paperwork's done. You don't have to spend any extra money to get through like you do in Zimbabwe, um, and we're golden. The Dallas layover grew from one to 14 hours. The good news, they made it on the plane. The bad news, they will miss their chili connection and miss the first day of hunting. Traveling international can wear on the body, there is something special about the experience. The sight of the Andes from above is one of a kind. So we're at Tupangato, which is in Mendoza, Argentina. It took us three days to get here. We're like in the middle of a winery. This this whole place encompasses in a you know, in a big farm here, but this is a 100,000 acre ranch that we're hunting here with uh, the Red Stag Patagonia Dave Denise guys. Day one. It's actually day four, but day three, or however I lost what day it was. Get some stuff done here. Shoot our guns, have some lunch, get ready, get settled in. Maybe go hunting this afternoon and get her done. Syndicate style. They brought us once, uh, Diego Jr. brought us to our new, um, our new lodging facility. Um, it's very eclectic. It's very hard to explain um, here. It's, it's not modern. It's not traditional. It's just very, very different. I don't know how to explain it, but it's uh, absolutely beautiful and absolutely amazing. It's 22,000 feet in elevation. <coughs> we're going to let Josh climb it. we got to give him some detox till the end of the week, and then we're gonna, he's going to climb the mountain. I can climb those stairs. <laughs> <laughs> the family lodge, what the Diegos have here, is um, it's been their family for 100 years. It's uh, absolutely phenomenal. The woodwork and the architecture and the paintings alone um, are history for the past 150 years of Argentina. It's absolutely beautiful. We're going to go shoot our rifle and see if we can't get them straight. Make it right. I'm sure the uh, AA uh, American Airlines guys have tried to screw them up as much as possible. We'll fix it. There's nothing that gets Josh more excited than the shooter. Diego seems to be a good one. Diego's guns and Clint's rifle, they should have plenty to keep them busy at the range. Oh, 
on this trip I didn't try travel with my own gun because um, I'm lazy. I don't, I don't want to deal with the customs. Um, I knew that they provided uh, rifles here. I'm always skeptical about uh, trying a new rifle. However, um, first day here, I went to the shooting range and uh, tried out three different rifles they provided. Um, all the zeros were good. Got familiar with all the guns, so it worked out great. I had to deal with customs all, and the um, rifles were spot on. one for us about five days into this tour but we're uh, ready to rock and roll this two when you put is four by four okay okay after a painful trip around the world the guys are finally in field diego is confident that he will get them into some game the question how will they decide who gets to take the first try at one of these red stags So hunting with this week with Josh Cleghorn from Cryptek and and uh, you know he's he's a collector of species. He really not a you know he, you know, he, he likes to kill trophies, but he, he likes to kill. You know, so he, uh, he he made it very clear that you know he didn't really need to kill a 500 incher. It was he, he just liked a, a representative of the species. So it's a nice three ten three. Look like to me. 310, making a move on this on this big red stag and and uh, we're moving around a hill, hill and uh, you know Josh spots a really nice fallow deer and decides hey I'd rather have that one right there so we go down and, and make a nice stock on him. It's the biggest fallow deer I've ever seen. <laughs> Unfortunately the stock on the stag didn't work out but as they moved to get into a better position Josh spots a fallow deer. He grew up in Texas and had a few opportunities at a fallow deer, but nothing like this one. There is no way Josh is going to let this deer get away from him.
Good. Huh? Yep. Let me know when you're ready. Good. All right, man. Huge fallow deer. Huge fallow deer. <laughs> Argentina has big fallow. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. Tupangato. I would have raised him, but he was about 80 <laughs> yards. <laughs> yeah, so. Well, well, we did a long stock, so yeah. it worked. kind of got him at 20. He would have went right below us, but I mean, we had him, everything was perfect. Take him out, right? Just perfect. We're here in Argentina. You know, tell us a little story about, you know, you trying to get one of these for a while. No, yeah, I grew up in Texas, South Texas, and uh, grew up typical South, South Texas ranch hunting with all the exotics there and for, for all the whitetail, and you know a lot of people have killed them. Um, really nice ones, huh? Decent fallow, but I've hunted fallow for years. I never got one even remotely big so as soon as I saw this one I knew it's beautiful yeah it's gorgeous it's, uh, it's a fallow deer of a lifetime for me so we're here in Argentina and it's gonna be a more beautiful yeah. place there's beautiful we're game game here fallow everywhere stag running around everywhere here in Tupangato Diego decides to take a little different approach to see if they can find a big stag horses are a great way to get high up in these mountains as they move up the ridge Josh has a great opportunity to test out his new prototype Aquilo Down Jacket. So we're here in the Andes Mountains testing out the new uh, Aquilo Down Jacket from uh, Cryptic. It uh, has 100% waterproof down and um, it's perfect for this environment. So you can see the clouds in the air, it's very wet and moist. Um, so far on the test it's been uh, absolutely phenomenal, couldn't be happier with it. Horseback ride provides a great look at the land, but hasn't turned up any big stags. They were seeing a lot more game in the lower foothills, so it's back down the mountain they go. So we're up here. We started at about 8,000 feet with the horses and got up here at about 10,000 and we're uh, kind of looking straight across at a glacier that you really can't see but it's really cool and uh, we're just we're just out here trying to trying to find a bigger stag. So to be here in the Andes Mountains in the foothills of the Andes chasing red stag is um, in Tupangato is um, beautiful scenery and absolutely amazing majestic um, couldn't ask for a better um, picturesque place to do it in. There's a, there's a three, three, yeah, there's one more mm -hmm. at, the, at the right. Young ones? No, that's both. He's rubbing that hand. Yeah. See him? Mm -hmm. This one, the, no. Hmm? This one with the hinds over there. Where? There, at the left, at the right. You see the hinds? Here. That one's oh, broke oh. on the right too. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Front one though. Got giant fronts on that one side. Yeah, yeah, he does. He's just a long. young bull. His left G2 is about 25 inches long. The thing is giant. The front one? The front one. Josh sees another old stag from the side-by-side. -side. He is on the move. He knows he doesn't have a lot of time to play around on this one. Josh and Diego make a fast move up this hill in order to try to get around it. We saw a stag we wanted to go after. Josh was going after a stag that same afternoon and we had to go up the hill to put a chase on it. And we had a lot of CrossFit conversations the night before, so that was our group CrossFit exercise going up this hill, trying to keep up with Diego Jr. and Andy and Josh. Quite some work.
Seeing a stag move up this draw, Josh and Diego are able to run up the mountain and get around him. Now Josh just needs a good rest. Sorry, 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 that's it. Take, take. Oh, good job. Good job. <laughs> that's a great job. Did you get them both? Good job. Good job. A teeny and red stag. Yes. Because we have more. So we've seen this bull. He goes straight up this hill. Yeah. And these guys just start running after him straight up the hill. Yeah. I'm a little bit behind. Our Argentinian guys, we're at, the, we're, we're at the base of the Andes. We get um, straight to the top and turn around, and he's down in the, below us. <laughs> 80 to 120 yards, something like that. I don't yeah, know. it was a good down, mean, down angle. Straight sure. down. Very good shot. He made good. two shots. Both of them were, what, uh, maybe four inches apart right in the front shoulder. Yeah, it was good. It's a beautiful bull. It's a great well, shot down hill, bud. Thank you. Nice. Appreciate it. Nice. Thank you very much. Uh, the experience on that first stalk, getting up to where we had to go, it, it was, you don't know, you expect the best, and I think those guys did the right thing in the way we hunted that stag, and we got up around it. Everything was perfect, and they, they, they proved to us that they knew what they're doing, and we were here to hunt. That was impressive. He reloaded that thing in a half a second. I mean, it was... Squeeze the trigger. The gun was already up and jacked back, and he had another one yeah. in there. He's so, off. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He, he uh, didn't take his head off the scope very much. With a successful kill, Josh hikes his trophy out of the canyon with the group. Clint is in a hurry to do some glassing before sunset in the hope of spotting a big stag. There's a good bull there, yeah. Sitting from the house, you can glass up to the base of these mountains, but we're up in the hunting area and glassing, and you have the backdrop. You can easily be distracted on actually looking for what you're hunting and just looking at the beauty of the place. Uh, yeah, it was, it was incredible glassing up there. It looks pretty good, man. If you ask me. He's nice. He's big. He's got big fronts. I have my iPhone. I can take a picture of him. Let me take a picture of him. You see the, it's the faces? Yeah, this narrow, small face, huh? Yeah. Small neck. The small neck, this. Good fronts. Good front. I uh, saw a nice stag through the spotting scope, took a picture with my, my iPhone, my smartphone, and that's always fun just to send back to people and put it on Facebook and show them what we're looking at and wait for more pics to come. Right before dark, Mike gets a glimpse of a giant walking up a mountain. He is a mile away, but he knows he is a good one. Next week on The Syndicate, Mike and Clint work hard to get a trophy of their own. Get paid. 
when the man 